Hey, welcome. Good morning to all of you. Good afternoon, whatever uh, time it is where you are. We'd like to welcome you back to uh, uh, Coffee with Kevin. This is um, one of those times where we're, we're simply uh, having fun taking a look back at what we've talked about uh, the past Sunday. So last Sunday, we were going to talk briefly about uh, what we talked about during the preaching time. I'm always saying this, and I believe this is part of my ministry philosophy. We're having a conversation. It is not a monologue, my preaching time. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue because we're hearing from God, and God is speaking through the clergy person, through me, to what God uh, wants us to do, what kind of instructions God wants us to receive. And so last week during our time together, last Sunday during our time together, we dialogued from Psalms 130. The reason we chose Psalms 130 is because uh, we're in the Lenten season, and during our time of Lent, we look at uh, a season of preparation for each of our lives. All of us, as children of God, as believers, ought to be preparing ourselves during the Lenten season so that we can, we can meet Jesus at the empty tomb. And so that's the goal. Now, during this time of preparation, we look at uh, different scriptures, different, uh, whether it be Psalms or whether it's something from the Old Testament or something from the New Testament, we look at times where we can uh, go into a season of, of penitence. And so that's why we looked at uh, this week, last week, last Sunday, Psalms 130. Psalms 130 is considered one of seven songs of penitence. And it, so it gives us a time to, to reflect, to look back, to say, Lord, help me. And, and so that I can prepare myself uh, to receive Jesus at the empty tomb. And so if you look at Psalms 130, as we kind of, of tried to demonstrate through last week, it's one of seven Psalms that talks about uh, a time for uh, penitence or a time to repent or to reflect or to look back and to move forward from that point. Psalms 102 also speaks to that. Psalms 143, Psalm 6, Psalm 32, Psalm 38, and of course, David's Psalm 51. And so if you look at those, if you have time, you'll, you'll get something uh, really good from those particular Psalms. We also want to highlight that it is a psalm of ascent, or a song, S-O-N-G, of ascent, S -C, uh, S, I'm sorry, A-S-C-E-N-T-S, ascents. So those psalms mean they have an upward kind of motion. So when you look at those particular psalms, you'll see that they say a song of ascents, and which it means that as the children of Israel were on their way to Jerusalem. It was an upward climb. They were on their way up to Jerusalem, and they began to sing. They began to sing about the goodness of God. They began to reflect on what God was doing in and through their lives. And so that's what we get from Psalms 130. So anytime we look at the Psalms and we see in the, 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 the heading a song of ascent, that's what it's referring to, the children of Israel began to sing this as they were headed up the hill toward Jerusalem. They could see the city in sight, and they got so excited. And that should speak to us. We ought to get excited as we uh, ascend up to meet Jesus at the empty tomb. Now this Psalm, Psalm 130, is broken into four parts. So part one would be verses one and two, and the writer deals with an individual prayer. And so he's praying to the Lord for help. The second part of that would be verses 3 and 4, where the writer is, is he's asking God, uh, God, if you kept a record of sin, who could stand? And so the third part of this psalm would be verses 5 and 6, where the writer is having a confession of faith. He is demonstrating his faith in God. And he says this in verse 5, I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits for the Lord, and in His Word I put my hope. So he's literally saying, here is my, my confession of faith. 
I'm going to put my trust in God. I'm going to wait for God to do something in my life. And then the fourth part of the psalm, where the writer gets to a place where he is confident in what God is doing, and he invites the whole Israelite community, the whole church, if you will, he invites the whole community to put their trust in God's unfailing love. And this is what he writes in verse 7. He says, 7, Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love. So he literally says, hey, I'm going to extend an invitation to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ to put their trust in the Lord. And the reason that we ought to put our trust in God is because with God, there is unfailing love. Man, that is so exciting. This unfailing love that he's talking about, is, it involves all of God's promises. Everything that God has promised us, never to leave us or forsake us. That he is always going to be with us. That we can count on God to show up whenever we need God. All of those promises are wrapped up in God's unfailing love. Just think about that for a minute. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, God has promised us that God would always be in our corner, that God would always show up with something. According to Romans 8 and 28, it says that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called for God's promise, called according to God's purpose. So that God's unfailing love, according to the writer of Psalms 130, everything is wrapped up in God's unfailing love. This last part where the writer says to us, hey, guess what? Uh, he, he says this, uh, and with him, with God, is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all of their sins. So the one barrier that the writer has understood that keeps us from fully being in a relationship with God, that keeps us from fully being able to serve God, that keeps us from fully being able to worship God, that one barrier, according to the writer, is sin. But he says, here is the good news. He himself will redeem. Not only will he redeem, but he will fully redeem. Then he says, he himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. You know what that's pointing us to? The cross of Jesus Christ. So as we maneuver, have this upward move, we're heading toward meeting Jesus at the empty tomb. The writer says, the cross of Jesus Christ will redeem us. The cross of Jesus Christ has forgiven us of all our sins. And nothing, my sisters and brothers in Christ, should be more exciting and should be more joyful than to know that Jesus Christ came, died for us, and has redeemed us. According to this writer, and this is an Old Testament writer, Psalm 130. Again, we talked from the topic, from the question, who could stand? And so the writer gives us the confidence at the end of this song to say, I know that I can stand, not based on what I've done, but based on the work, the finished work, of Jesus on the cross. Amen. So that's our, our take from uh, last week, Psalm 130. Take a look at it. Read it for yourself. It's pretty straightforward. I hope you uh, enjoy it. And again, if you want to reach out to me, by all means, send me any kind of question that you may have. If I don't know the answer, we'll find the answer. If I don't know it, we'll tell you we don't know it and whatnot because we wish we knew everything, but we really do not. Um, but reach me at Kevin Elmore at V-A-U-M-C dot and uh, we'll, we'll respond to your emails. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen.